Can I see your ID, my friend? Again, welcome back. I want to talk to you guys about our kingdom purpose and our kingdom identity. And uh, you probably already have noticed that uh, I've been creating a lot of content around the subject matter, which is of great passion of mine, something that uh, I wish uh, there was somebody that was in my life early in my walk with the Lord that will be able to help me out to fine-tune and to discover uh, early in my life my kingdom purpose, my identity, what God has called me to do so. But it seems like almost I was like on my personal journey of trying to discover it myself. But by God's grace, because I was searching him out, he sent the right people, you know, the right conferences, seminars, books, connections, and etc. So again, I want to talk to you guys about our identity and purpose. And today, uh, the subject that I want to cover is very important, and I titled it like this, King Saul's Armor. And most of you probably already know the story very well, that when uh, Goliath uh, went out against the Israelites and for 40 days he was mocking them, that nobody wanted to go against him because they saw this monster, this giant that could just literally with one swing of the sword would be able to chop any soldier in a half. And uh, when David uh, went to visit his brothers and he was delivering them some uh, bread and some cheese, I, I like to call it, you know, he was the first pizza delivery guy. He brought him some cheese and some bread. By the time he got there, the cheese already melted in the bread. So there's your pizza. Anyway, <laughs> and uh, so what happened, as soon as he heard the mockery of this giant, his response like, whoa, wait a minute. This guy's talking trash against God's people. I got to go take care of him. So he went to see the king. Because he learned there was a reward for someone who would go against this giant. And when he explained to the king, he's like, look, king, you know, I may look young. I'm a teenager. You may not know me that well. But when I was watching my father's sheep, you know, a bear came out. I killed it. The lion came out and I killed it. So, you know, that brought some encouragement to uh, King Saul. He's like, okay, awesome, great. So here you go, David. Here, take my armor. Put it on and, you know, go out there and fight um, this monstrous giant. So as we're reading the scripture, interesting uh, thing occurred. And it's written in Samuel, 1 Samuel 17, verse uh, 38 and 39. And it says this. So Saul clothed David with his armor and he put on the bronze helmet on his head. He also clothed him with a coat of mail. And David fastened his sword to the armor and tried to walk. For he, was not, uh, he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, this is interesting, watch this. I cannot walk in these, for I have not tested them. So David took them off. So in other words, David, after he put on uh, King Saul's armor, his helmet, his sword, this thing, and he tried to move around, and he's like, whoa, this stuff hasn't been tested. Let me read you the amplified version uh, that kind of breaks it down a little more details. Uh, after David put on the armor, he said this to King Saul. I cannot go with these because I'm not used to them. So David took them off. Interesting. Uh, what I wanted to specifically outline and point out, what does it mean uh, concerning uh, the King Saul's armor? What does that concept mean? Is this just some kind of a, uh, words for, from the scripture from Old Testament? But no, I wanted to actually share something important. When it comes to uh, King Saul's armor, the king, the armor he was used to, something he fought in, he wanted to give it to someone else. Because like, hey, I tested these, I was in battle with these, and they worked for them. When David put on, he's like, man, this stuff ain't working for me. And then later the scripture says he took, you know, the slingshot and, and some stones and he went against the Goliath with that. The principle or the lesson that I want to share here is this, that we as individuals, we cannot use someone else's spiritual armor. In other words, we cannot, I'll use this word, covet someone else's spiritual anointing, their calling, their purpose. As much as uh, the king's heart was so open to David to say, hey, you know, I've used this stuff that worked for me before. David's like, hey, but it hasn't been tested by me. Here's one of the issues that we actually come across. And I faced this in my earlier walk with the Lord is that we begin to follow certain men or women of God. We begin to read certain books. We begin to watch some YouTube videos, follow some ministry ministries. And we, uh, when we like what we see, we like what we hear, and that type of, I guess, calling or ministry that a specific person is operating in, we kind of feel that's close to our heart. Like, yeah, I feel God is kind of calling me to that area too. For example, let's say God has called you to be a pastor, and all of a sudden, you know, there's these particular pastors that you follow, you listen to them on social media, and etc. And all of a sudden, deep inside your heart, you begin to covet, you begin to desire 
uh, their anointing, you know, you like their ministry, the size of the church, uh, how God is using them, the books that have written, how they preach with charisma, so on and so forth. But that that's something we need to be extremely very careful with. Because as soon as we begin to covet or desire someone else's calling and anointing, we're going to get ourselves into a lot of trouble. Can you imagine this teenager David? You know, he was, you know, a teenager between age 13, 14, and 15 or so. And at the moment, he was trying to wear an adult's uh, armor. Not only he was big and heavy, but can you imagine David trying to go and uh, fight against Goliath? Just that armor itself would weigh him down and wear him out so much that he would obviously get himself killed. So David went out into the battlefield with the tools, or with, 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 should I say this, with the kingdom tools that God has given them. Which for David that given moment was a slingshot and some rocks because that was something he was used to. So what I want to say with this is when we look even through the history of weaponry throughout time, we understand that the weaponry during the Roman era is not the same as the weapon they used during the World War, uh, during a civil war, and the weaponry and the armor that they had during. The Civil War is not the same as during World War II or even uh, World War I. In other words, as time and generation passed, the, the weaponry increased, the power of the weaponry increased, and so on and so forth. And can you imagine right now uh, uh, one of our soldiers going and fighting against uh, a Roman soldier? That Roman soldier will not be able to come close to that to our modern day soldier with their sword because you just shoot him down with a machine gun, or even a tank going against a whole uh, Ro Roman army. Even if that tank runs out of artillery, you just go out there and mow him down with a tank. So, in other words, we understand that for this is what I believe in that every individual and even every generation has their own specific armor has their own specific kingdom tools and weaponry that God has equipped them with. That's why King David could not use them. But I want to, as I finish this up, I want to read this uh, a very well, uh, a very familiar verse to you. One of the commandments where it talks about in Exodus uh, 20, 17 says this, you shall not covet. In other words, that is selfish to desire and attempt to acquire your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant and his female servant or his ox or his donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. In other words, clearly, one of the commands says, do not desire or try to run after what someone else has. Even though, like I mentioned before, your calling and your kingdom assignment upon the earth could be very similar. You know, how many pastors do we have? A lot. How many more pastors are going to become in years and decades to come? A lot more. But even though you may be functioning in a similar uh, type of an arena, in a field, in an office, God is going to specifically equip you with your specific kingdom tools that you'll be able to use in your geographical location, in your particular church, in your particular sphere of influence. So the whole concept of the King Saul's armor is that as soon as you try to uh, say, oh, I just want to be like such and such pastor, I just want to be... Like such, such, such a minister, singer, you know, you can look up to someone, which is OK. But when you begin to covet who they are and what they have, you're going to get yourself into a lot of trouble. So, my friend, as I conclude, uh, I want to bless you with these uh, final thoughts that uh, search out what are the kingdom tools and what is the kingdom armor that God is given to you. For someone, it could be it could look like a sword. But for somebody like David, it was a slingshot because what God has called David to fulfill, a sword would not be able to kill the Goliath. It was actually a slingshot and a stone. So bless you, my friend. Until next time.